All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, friend of the show. We're doing this for the fourth year in a row. Four feet, March Madness, talking to my man, Matt Langle, the Colgate Raiders. Coach, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great, Boss Man. Good. It's good to hear, man. I must ask you, man, Uh, I tell you, I know you all had a tough loss to to American there, man, late in the year, man. Uh, Tell me how did that kind of give you guys a, that refocus and reset you wanted to have for your team to get your – Lock, lock back in because I know when you win as much as you all do, man, sometimes habits can kind of relax a little bit, but getting a loss, we can coach them hard, man. And how did it really help you all get going again? Yeah, I think it just reminded uh, uh, all of us uh, that how fragile the game is. You know, if you have a bad shooting night or, um, you know, don't execute with the, with the, the precision you need or, you know, somebody else outworks you a little bit, a couple of loose balls here, offensive rebound, put back there, you know, you, you can end up on the short end of the stick. And I, I know our guys felt really bad after that game. And we have two guys who lost in the championship five years ago to Boston University before COVID ended the season and shut down the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, and I think it just, you know, was able to help them, uh, give them some ammunition to share with the group that as bad as we felt after losing to American uh, at home for, for our second loss in conference play that, you know, losing, losing in the postseason and, and um, you know, getting upset would feel, you know, exponentially worse than that. So I, I think that it, um, you know, certainly allowed us to reset on our, our values and, and focus back in on the things that are most important to our program and, uh, and try and play our best down the stretch. No doubt, and you said, Coach Langle, man, like, you know, I've noticed this from being around the game. Like, sometimes, like, when we get to, we get to feel uncomfortable, and young men are, yeah, they're human. So, sometimes you kind of need a little minor setback to get yourself back, 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 and focus. Talk about the leadership of your team and that culture to have guys who have felt that pain and know, hey, this is what we need to do now. We can really, like you said, in the Patriot League, you have to win those games. It's kind of so much. Talk about the culture of, Colgate and, and those older guys who really help lead it be especially of you and your staff for the other guys in the program. No, this we're about winning here. We need to do things the right way, the Colgate way all the time. Yeah, I think we've been fortunate enough for a long period of time to have guys who um, are, are really focused on winning um, and what goes into that, whether that's on the court in the game or off the court in terms of taking care of your body and um, and preparing yourself physically and mentally, or you know, even also off the court, out, out, outside the the athletic sphere of of taking care of your responsibilities, of of being a, a responsible and accountable man to um, you know your academics and your uh, and, and your civil opportunities on community uh, service, and so. Yeah, I think that that's been passed down now over time, and it's it's probably the most valuable thing that we have going for us. Um, and we have two two fifth year guys and and three fourth year guys, and you know even some third and and second year guys who who have understood that and been taught that by by some other great players and great teammates. And so, um, yeah, we we never really lose sight of that. I think that um, you know our guys you know keep that. Um, you know, right in whether it's their rear view mirror or dashboard or what, whatever it may be there, it's always in their sights. And I think that, um, you know, we're certainly proud of that and, and try and always, you know, uh, external expectations are one thing, but, you know, we try to play to our internal expectations and that's a day-to-day basis as cliche as it sounds about, um, you know, living up to those standards for those who have come before you and, and, and setting the standard for those who are, are going to have an opportunity when you're not here anymore. And Coach Langle, discuss this as well, man. In today's portal world, having guys, fifth-year guys, four-year guys, three-year guys, two-year guys, because some of the guys are not going to be playing all the time and actually sticking with you and the culture you've built in Hamilton, New York there, say, hey, I got some his Kobe is very special. Let me not leave this special place because I want to be some, do something for, for me, per se. Yeah, I think it's significant. And um, I, I don't take – can't take any credit for it. Um, again, I, I, um, I'm very proud of that culture. Uh, we've been able to, I'm proud of the coaches um, who have helped build that uh, culture and, uh, and the players who have contributed over the past. I think what we've done a great job is identifying and recruiting uh, young men that come from families um, that value what Colgate is um, and what this program is. So 
that, you know, when they have great performance um, and, and maybe, you know, there would be other other places, other schools, uh, quote unquote, higher level um, that that would want them or um, would show interest in them. Uh, they recognize, you know, the opportunity that's here and what that has meant to them and, and are grounded in, you know, what was originally important to them. And so, you know, it may not be brighter lights or a bigger stage or, you know, charter flights or, or whatever those things that, that come along with um, those other opportunities, but um, being a part of a winning culture and, and having a, an opportunity to play for coaches that are committed to your growth and development on and off the court, and, um, you know, having experienced that too, because everybody can say that that's what they're going to do. But, um, you know, again, we're, we're fortunate to coach young people that, um, you know, value their experience and identify those, those, those things. And, um, and put ultimately the most important, most, most value in that, in that, uh, what they have, what they have right here. 100%. And it, well, people don't understand about Colgate coach language, like I talked to people, it's really, I can academic stand up school, really a lot of hacking. You are pretty much the Ivy League, but, but can do different things. So it's like academics must be very important to come to a country league school. And Colgate is very special for what, but academically, talk about that piece of the coach language about how finding the kids who are very intellectually smart off the court, the IQ on the court as well. Well, and it's not just, it's not just smart, meaning having a high intelligence level or having good grades in school, but it's, it's young people um, who are, again, are motivated to learn, um, you know, being in the classroom here, uh, you know, you're in a small environment and, you know, you're going to have to be engaged in that class, not just, you know, show up and take the exam and, and do the best you can, but like, you've got to, you know, form opinions, you've got to write papers, you've got to, you know, it's just like going to basketball practice. You can't, you can't not put in any work in the off season or uh, on your own and then just show up and shine. So, you know, again, we, we're fortunate to have guys and really target uh, recruiting guys who, yes, they have athletic talents, but they have interest in an education like this, that they're, because if it's a burden, um, you know, taking advantage of this, this academic opportunity is a burden for anybody we have, then it's going to be really hard to live up to the the standards of the program and and what we expect from everybody. One hundred percent. And also, let me ask you: uh, we talked about this a little bit. How playing against Bucknell against uh, my, my my guy JG over there, man. Uh, you know, the, kind of gave you guys a kind of that wake up call you needed because it's kind of a tougher game than you expected. Things don't want going the way you wanted to go, but winning that game is is his tough team. Boy, he's doing a good job in the first year over there and winning that game at home. How, talk about how important that was for your team to go in that final game, play, play the way they play against, Le against Lehigh. Yeah, again, we do have some experienced guys, but we also have some guys who haven't been uh, in the role that they're in and being in those moments. So, you know, being down 15 points and, um, you know, I think we were 0 of 15. Bucknell played just a, you know, a, a high risk, high reward, 1-3-1 one, one zone defense that we hadn't seen all season long. And so, you know, I think they realized from that game, fighting like we did to come back and, and get over the hump that, you know, you really have to bring it in this environment. And so, uh, you know, I think, you know, that that experience also helped us um, helped us, you know, lock back in for for what the championship game would be and and how we would need to go about our business. And to come about the crowd, you get the biggest crowd of the year again, the championship game against Lehigh, man. And about the support you had over the years and half from the fans up there, knowing what you all have done over over these past years, how special it's been, but how the community been for you guys as well. Yeah, I appreciate the question, boss, man. It, you know, Hamilton, New York is a unique place. We have, you know, a village of 3,000 people, 3,000 students uh, about in the school. And so, you know, we fight like crazy all year long in, in the Patriot League to see who's going to have home court advantage in the playoffs. It's three games. It's, you know, it's not back-to-back -back days like some of these conference tournaments with neutral site. And so, you know, that's a huge advantage. We have a great, great uh, home record over the years. And uh, and an even better conf uh, conference tournament record at home over over this stretch. And, um, you know, a huge part of it is the community uh, that they come out and support the the guys who, who they know. It's not they're just they're going to root for for a team like the, the guys are living this community. They interact, you know, they're in the grocery stores and the restaurants and, you know, they know the kids by name who come to the games. And so, yeah, I think that's a huge part of of this run of this journey is is the support of the community. We were on, we were on spring break. Um, you know, for the semifinal and championship. And we were still, you know, people were hanging from the rafters. The student athletes all came out, um, you know, made for a great, great environment, great, 
great uh, college basketball games. And, you know, certainly in that Bucknell game and, and the Lehigh game too, um, you know, they, they gave us energy that, that, that um, you know, our guys took and, and, and performed well. And Coach Langle, I wanted to bring up our Braden, uh, what he's done, player of the year, tournament MVP. Let's talk about his growth and development as well, Coach Langle, and how, how you're happy seeing what, what he's, he's become been in your program. Yeah, I mean he's he's a terrific talent, obviously, um, and 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 has vision and and a skill set that is 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 really high level in our conference. Uh, I think what I'm I'm most proud of is his commitment to the work and the process. I mean, he he comes in every every day after a game to watch film with me and the coaches. He's always working on his craft and improving and adding skills to his game. He's studying studying tape of the opposition of how they're going to guard him of what he needs to be thinking about to to um, help us win that's on offense and defense so for a young guy just in his second year um, you know no no extra years of high school or anything he's he's very mature uh, in terms of his approach uh, he's had a great great year of production you know scoring points getting assists grabbing rebounds um, you know putting pressure on the defense but um, you know I think he still has has a ways that he can improve and just the second year with all the individual accolades that, that he's he's earned I think his his biggest thing is winning and um, you know it's special to have a guy with the um, at that position who who values winning like he does 100 percent and coach Langle you besides the COVID year you've won 23 plus games over the last six years five six six years man and, and it, it's hard to do that and win what you've won so for you it's just as, as a coach and your family people who support you up there man how does it make you feel knowing that, hey, you move conferences this, this together so as to win 23 plus games over six, five out six years, not counting the COVID year that got, got cut short? Yeah, it's an it's an honor to be the caretaker of this program that that brings pride um, to so many people uh, in our community as part of our school. Um, you know, we we've had a great group of guys for a long time now. Our, our coaching staff has turned over, and so you know, we continue to have. Um, uh, great, great coaches who who model the behaviors that we want from our, our student athletes, the work ethic, uh, the commitment to improvement. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, that that kind of what what we are, who we are, how we do things has been passed down. And so want to have guys who are committed to leading and 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 helping uh, new faces or young faces um, the way that they were helped uh, is certainly um certainly a, a huge part of, of what we're doing. And then to have young faces and new faces who are committed to learning um, and, and don't, you know, acknowledge that they've come to this place to be a part of something special is, um, yeah, really, really makes me feel good as a coach. Hey, Coach Lang, this is going to make you really happy. The first person I heard from after you won was, was Coach Bray. He came down to me, JR, a man won. He pulled in the house. <laughs> So Coach Bray was the first person to talk to me about your win was Coach, Coach Bray. So he's walking close to his too as well, Coach Lang. He's still keeping an eye on you for sure. Well, it makes me feel old. I remember when I was a, a young guy and he was at Delaware trying to recruit me to to go a little bit south of where I grew up. So tell Coach I uh, I send my best and I, I appreciate him and and uh, and and him keeping track on us. No doubt, I sure will, buddy. Well, I hope you I hope we'll be win, win around on two in that tournament, man. I'll be cheering for you as always, buddy. Look forward to seeing you on the road this summer during the live period, man. All right, Joe. Take care of yourself. See you, buddy. Bye, bye.